Next up, we have cholesterol and saturated fat causing mm. heart disease. You know, mm. this is a. I think this one can be put to bed pretty quickly by the fact yep. that the first heart attack in the United States was until the year 1912. And then, mm -hmm. you know, in the year 1900, there was no heart disease. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. we introduced processed foods and these refined oils, and everyone starts getting sick. But no, 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 mm -hmm. they want to blame the one food we've always eaten. Can you talk about, yeah. you know, some of the mechanisms behind heart disease and what the true okay. cause is? Yeah. Once again, let me remind viewers that science is an empirical art. It's an, Well, it's not really an art. It's an empirical discipline. If you want to assert cause and effect, you must follow the scientific discipline lest you a look a fool b confirm your incompetence in science and c lead people up the garden path with a false conclusion leading to a hundred years of false dietary advice which has directly killed billions of people before their time what happened a bloke called ansel keys who was a fish physiologist, by the way. That was his first and foremost thing in academia. A cold water fish physiologist. <laughs> he was clearly having trouble publishing things as a fish physiologist. And we all know that academics need to publish or perish. It's part of the life of it as an academic. And so he came up with this hypothesis that the consumption of saturated fat and cholesterol was the thing causing heart disease. Then what he did is he looked at the relationship between heart disease and the reported intake in various countries of fat and cholesterol, not the actual observed intakes, what people told the researchers they were consuming, by the way, so still not science, and he found this relationship. Well, he found a relationship in seven countries. It's called the seven countries study. Guess how many countries Ansel Keys collected data from for this study? 21 or 22? 21 or 22? That's how many. Guess how many of those data points were excluded from the seven country study? You can do the math on this, Max. I'm sure you can. Uh, most, well, I'll get there. I think it's about 14 or 15. Point. Right. <laughs> so what he did was he cherry picked. He picked the countries that agreed with his hypothesis and published that. Anyone that says that's not true does not know the history. This is public record. Everybody that knows the history knows that's what he did. Ansel Keys was a criminal. And he should have spent the remainder of his life incarcerated in prison, not lauded as the greatest scientist of our time, because he was nothing of the sort. The man is directly responsible for vastly more deaths by orders of magnitude than Hitler and Pol Pot put together. Because there is no causal relationship between heart disease and the intake of either saturated fat or cholesterol. We have a bunch of prospective cohort studies. The ones that concern saturated fat specifically, there are five major meta-analyses available for your reading pleasure in the literature today. All five agree that there is no meaningful relationship of any kind. Only one of those studies even reached a, a statistical significance threshold. And the way that you get statistical significance in these large scale studies is by having a large sample size, not by having a large change in signal or effect. It's minuscule. It's so small that it means that the actual odds, even if it was causal, which it isn't, of a person, any given person, experiencing heart disease over a 100 year lifespan is so close to zero as makes absolutely no practical odds to that human being whatsoever. Saturated fat, exonerated, done, end of discussion. Saturated fat does not cause heart disease demonstrated. There is a slightly better relationship between cholesterol and various subfractions of the lipoproteins and heart disease in prospective cohort studies, slightly better. Nonetheless, well, sunburn and ice cream sales. There is no experimental work, nor even any remotely feasible mechanistic cause and effect means by which cholesterol or any of the lipoproteins or any subfraction of the lipoproteins whatsoever could possibly cause heart disease. It's the stupidest, most 
vapid, most vacuous hypothesis that exists anywhere in science just about. It's, it's, it's inanity is vast. And it's actually only underpinned by a criminal cabal of pseudoscientists who are all bought and paid for. And I have shown that many, many times on my YouTube channel, which people should go and watch. It's great. Um, because you are ordered to by his lordship, Ted. <laughs> He's my co-conspirator on my channel, or one of my co-conspirators. And anyone that disobeys Ted, well, look out. So go and watch my channel and you'll learn more about it. <laughs> so so what is the true culprit of this heart disease and heart attacks right easy atherosclerosis is the underpinning dysfunction behind most heart disease atherosclerotic lesioning of the endothelial cells of the vascular tree is caused by several factors one is chronic hypertension high blood pressure Another one is chronic inflammation of the endothelial cell beds. And the third one is physical injury to those cell beds. It's like when people talk about when you learn how to be a firefighter, they say, well, to have a fire, you need three things. You need a fuel source, oxygen and heat. Remove any one of those and the fire cannot survive. The same is true of atherosclerosis. You need damage to the endothelial cells, inflammation, and high blood pressure. The high blood pressure actually seems to be the most underpinning cause of the other two. The damage, yeah. mostly, is caused, not entirely, because, well, glycation damage is another endothelial cell damager, but mostly it seems to be this so-called idiopathic hypertension that people suffer. I can actually deal with that one too today, just for fun. You go, it's why not, not chuck it in there? Well, hypertension is not idiopathic. That, that When they say, oh, this hypertension is idiopathic. No, it isn't. No. What causes hypertension? People say, oh, it's salt. No. Mostly, it's the inability to excrete salt that causes hypertension. Sure, the excess salt is causing it, but any healthy, normal person with normally functioning kidneys will excrete excess salt. So if you've got excess salt in your blood causing hypertension, it's not really the salt that's the issue. It's the fact that you can't excrete salt normally. What is the usual cause of an inability to excrete salt? I'll tell you if you don't know. It's hyperinsulinemia. What's the cause of hyperinsulinemia, Max? Too many carbohydrates. Pouring unnecessary contraindicated carbohydrates down your stupid neck every day of your life. So if you want to sort out the hypertension issue you've got, if you've got one, stop eating carbs. Mm. I think go. that's I think that's a great way to put it in the sense that people like to blame, you know, red meat for these issues, but they can't mm. give us a mechanism as to how it works. They can't right. point to it's this compound of meat that does this. They go, right. here are these association studies which have all these yeah. other confounding well, variables. You say that, Max, but they've actually tried. There's two that they've mentioned in the literature that they are still banging on about as being absolutely the cause of heart disease from red meat. Mm -hmm. And they are called NEU5GC and TMAO. Okay, so let's deal with TMAO first. TMAO is trimethylamine oxide. It is a metabolic byproduct of TMA trimethylamine and trimethylamine comes from meat and eggs mostly so there you go slam dunk heart disease what am i talking about okay well oh and the studies to prove it here's what they do they take people and they overnight change their diet from a standard diet that they're on to a diet that's consisting of a high amount of meat and then over the next few weeks they measure the level of tma and tmao that builds up in their body and say there you go there's proof well, here's what they fail to consider. After several months on a carnivore diet, your microbiome readjusts and you cultivate a whole bunch of bacteria whose sole source of energy and you know the way they live with us in our guts is that they gobble up TMAO. Idiots. It's absolutely <laughs> stunning that they call this science. So TMAO, not a problem. Doesn't happen, not a cause of any kind of concern whatsoever. The idea about NEU5GC is that, well, NEU5GC is like a flag. It's like a tag that 
is found on the red meat, basically. And it's a foreign tag, so-called, that the body recognises somehow and causes a, an inflammatory response to and, and somehow that causes cancer or something. Okay, fine, great theory. Until we then look at the prospective cohort studies where they look at the amount of red meat being consumed by people and they then look at the incidence of heart disease and they get once again this ridiculously weak, almost non-existent, near zero signal, which is statistically significant because of millions of person years of follow-up, but equates, even if it was cause and effect, which it isn't, to the odds of any given living human being over a 100-year lifespan of, of getting cancer or anything else is so close to zero as makes no practical odds whatsoever. Ask the stake. All right? All cool. right. Now, would you... Obviously, cholesterol is very essential. It's a precursor mm. to testosterone. We need it for our mm -hmm. cell membranes. Would you go so far to say... Well, and our body also makes some too, which I, I think a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Would you go so far to say that cholesterol is good for you? Yes. Yeah? Well let's put it let's let's be very accurate here without sufficient cholesterol you will die very quickly 50 percent by weight and by volume of every single cell membrane and every single one of the trillions and trillions with a t of cells in your body is cholesterol testosterone is based from cholesterol so is estrogen the myelin sheathing on all of your uh, nervous cells throughout your body. Guess where that comes from? Yep, the cholesterol again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I could go on all day. Vitamin D, which is a precursor to every other enzyme reaction in your body. Well, that's in the cholesterol pathway as well. Your body creates this stuff because it needs to. It's under the control of your genes and your genes are the absolute pinnacle of human evolution in your line of ancestry you are right now you are the peak of evolution your genes have survived at least 3800 million years and i think a lot longer than that actually they really know what they're doing so yes cholesterol vital and under control of your body, let's just get out of the way and let our body do what it needs to, shall we? And you said that the body makes some cholesterol. I'll give you a number. It's 80% of the cholesterol in your body at any given time is made by your body from non-cholesterol precursors. You don't need to eat cholesterol to have it. So there it is, cholesterol. Good stuff. Get it down here. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mm.